We are backstage again at Newport Folk today. It's Saturday. All weekend I've been asking artists, who do you want to see? And they've all told me Marlon Williams, and I'm lucky enough to be joined by him right now. Thank you so much for making the time, Marlon. Well, that's very nice. Yes, everyone. I saw that uh, AJ from the Serotones, that we made a pact that if you were to enter the media tent during the interview, it would cease so she could get a picture. Oh. So oh. You, you are certainly the person to watch here today. I'm tickled. And, and I can't help but notice that you and Bob Boylan were talking outside there. Do you think you'll be stopping by the tiny desk at some point soon? Uh, that's going to happen in the very near future, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome, man. Well, uh, wonderful. You had an amazing set today. We were able to hear it from this stage over here. So who have you been looking forward to seeing or who did you enjoy seeing today? Well, I haven't had much of a chance mm -hmm. to see anything. Um, I got to see a bit of Chicano Batman. Nice. Who I love. Um, I caught a little bit of Angel. Angel Olsen is, I'm a big fan of hers. Label mate, right? Or sort of? S yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, you know, umbrella label mate. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, I saw her for the first time a month ago and then managed to catch it just a glimpse today. But, uh, yeah, she's, she's fantastic. And then, uh, yeah, I'm going to hopefully catch a little bit of Jim James. And yes. then um, a bit of drive-by truckers would be great. And then, I mean, Wilco is going to be fantastic, of, of course. Of course, of course. I'm gonna, I want to see Jim, too, so I'll, I, uh, we'll, I'll make sure that we get over there. That's okay. um, and then, so, uh, in New Zealand and Australia, you guys have been doing well at this festival. Julia Jacqueline kicked it off, then you uh, toured it over to the uh, next thing. You guys are taking over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really nice. You know, we're, we uh, both have the same manager, and so it's but we, uh, we, we spend a lot of time together, and we always end up playing the same stage on the same day. We're doing That's it. We're doing it in Portland in a, in a week, you know, at Pickathon. So, oh really? Yeah. Oh nice. Yeah, she's the best. She's one of our favorites over here. So. Uh. Yeah, she's great. Well, wonderful, wonderful. Well, Newport Folk this year, they're doing a huge uh, sort of like a, a tribute to protest songs. Do you have a favorite protest song and one that sticks out for you? Favorite protest song. I don't know. I'm, I'm not a very politically minded uh, music appreciator or writer, but um. Uh, I don't know. I, uh, no, I, I don't have a favorite protest song. I'm sure I've got, like, the songs I love that are protest songs, but I can't think of any right now. Well, that's okay. That's all right. You'll be able to hear some great ones over there tomorrow. And then yeah. another thing that's a big at Newport is the whole idea of collaboration. If you could share uh, the stage with one of the artists here today, who would you want to uh, hop on with? I would, I would love to sing with Angel Olsen, oh, of course. Awesome. Yeah, I'd, yeah, that'd be, a, that'd be fantastic. I just, I, I'm in awe of everything she does, so that'd be... Yeah. No. Uh, how can you not be? How could you not? Yeah. Well, you have uh, just such an amazing voice. You know, it sort of takes you, strikes you from a distance, even like, you know, you were over there, but everyone here heard it and kind of stopped and looked over uh, the moment that you took the stage. So how did you find that voice? How did you find that that was the way that you sang and the way you sang best? Um, well, I, I come from a sort of a background. Um, I'm half New Zealand Māori, like native, native Māori, New Zealander. <laughs> um, and there's a really strong tradition and that culture of, of that sort of shameless, mm -hmm. shameless singing, you know, like it's that cro croonery, like mouth wide. <laughs> let's just let's just go for it. Mm -hmm. So so uh, that was definitely definitely a big influence. And th and then I sang in choirs, you know, growing up and uh, was really into to, to, to choral music and went and studied opera at university for a year. Oh wow! Yeah, so it's I guess it's. And then, but was also just always into country music and folk music, so that some sort of meeting of all those worlds, I guess. No, awesome, awesome. And then do you have any specific ways that you care for your voice, or you just kind of roll with the punches? I, I, could, I mean, I, I'm, I'm generally pretty lucky, touch wood, with how my voice holds out. Mm -hmm. But, uh, like, you know, I smoke a lot. <laughs> I, I don't look after myself that well. So I, I, I'm just, I can only imagine, or ho the only way I can see how that, how it's happened is that I, like, must have picked up something at university, which just in the general sort of, you know, the mechanics of singing that protects it somehow. I guess. No, of course it, it it sounds good. I think I think keep doing what you're doing. And then so you recorded uh, sort of your debut album, uh, Marlon Williams. It's a self-titled debut. Why'd you go the self-titled route? Why'd you sort of decide to uh, put your name as the name of the album? Uh, well, nothing jumped out at me. <laughs> it's like, you know, I don't want to. Nothing. Yeah, you know, I feel like it was always my sort of uh, my reading of things is that album titles just sort of spring out of whatever you know. Of of uh, of the process or something that's involved in, you know, there's something like it just and 
it always feels like that album titles deserve the name that they have. But nothing, nothing jumped out of me for that album. So I was like, oh, well, I'm not gonna, sk- I'm not gonna try and bullshit it. I'll just try and, I'll just call it Marlon, Marlon Williams. It works, it works. And then, so is there any song that jumps out to you on the album, one that you're particularly proud of, or that you share a special connection with? Um, well, there's, I'm more proud of the ones I didn't write. Really? <laughs> yeah, like there's, yeah, you know, there's three, three songs on that album that I didn't write, and a friend of mine wrote Dark Child. And uh, I don't know, it's it's a song that it's so sim- it's so simple, and I just I don't know I find new ways of performing it and just and you sort of it just keeps revealing itself to me in in different ways like even now you know. Yeah, well, I mean that must be a heavy responsibility. Friend writes a song, hands it to you, and says, "Sing this for me." You know that must be like sort oh, of. Oh, I a, took it. You took it. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's just nice. It's a really nice thing to be able to, to do is, is, you know, a friend, someone you know and love writes a song that makes you want to sing it. You know, it's like it's such a such a lovely feeling. So it's, you know, I, I always just feel nothing but sort of connected to him and to what, you know, and to him as a songwriter and as a friend. Whenever I sing it, it's it's just it's a nice feeling that I, that you don't necessarily always get with music. Of course, of course. Now, uh, this was your first album that was sort of released uh, here in the States. What if it, Was there anything that surprised you about recording an album, maybe a preconceived notion or something that you've, was a little bit tougher than you thought it might be or anything like that? Um, yeah, it's like, I think, I think the thing that is the most surprising and upsetting <laughs> about recording an album is how, no matter what, how, what sort of plans you put put into it, like it's you just you're, you're so out of control. Like this <laughs> time, because time passes, and and it, with every decision you make, you close yourself off to other decisions, whether you want to or not. You know, it's like yeah. I've have decided it's going to be this, and you can't like it's hard to change once you've done it. But and it's yeah, like you, you sort of it, it just sort of rolls it rolls ahead, and then you and then. A week or two weeks later, you just sort of come out of this haze, going, "Oh, shit!" I have that's, this. That's that, is it? That's no, 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 you're good. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, no, but that's that's how it feels. It's like, oh, that's is that the album? Yeah. Right. Is that it? Well, it, it's it's a good one. It, again, now Marlon Williams. If you aren't listening to the self-titled debut album, check it out. You definitely should be. Um, so you're in America right now. Uh, what would you say is the biggest cultural difference between either Newport, New Zealand, or America, New Zealand? What would you say? Um. We have this habit in New Zealand of being just like uh, crushingly uh, sort of self-conscious and, and you know like like we're sort of we're apologising for everything we do you know and so it's hard to sort of move it's hard to like it's hard to get things done or to feel things properly when you're like that mm-hmm. whereas in America it's like I don't know there's like a there's an ease of pe- people don't mind. I don't know. It's, it's an ego thing, and it's and that's fine. Like, yeah, no, totally. There are bigger egos in this country, well, and there's this sense of sense of entitlement to feeling and to and to you know, like it's 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 natural to to feel and want things, and that's it's, it's refreshing to come and experience that. Nice. I can relate to that struggle. I feel like I'm the same way. I'm always sort of like interjecting, like, oh, I'm sorry if it isn't too much trouble, like yeah, something yeah. like that. And people are like, just spit it out, guy. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. all right, uh, I will, I guess. <laughs> but it definitely, definitely an astute observation. Uh, it's a hell of a long flight from Newport to New Zealand. Who would you want to sit next to on that flight? Who do you want uh, in the chair next to you? Wow. Um, I would want to sit next to... <laughs> I think I want to sit, to, sit next to Louis C.K., Oh, he's from around here too. Is he? He is. Yeah, he's uh, from Massachusetts. Oh, uh, yeah, that's up. right. Yeah. yeah, because mainly because I know he's terrified of flying. Oh. And so I just that'd be amusing for me. <laughs> Someone else's pain would be amusing. Oh, t- his pain. His absolutely. Pain is Louis C.K. Yeah, pain. I want Louis C.K.'s pain sitting next to me on a flight. All right, I like that. I like that a lot. Well, this will be my second to last question. I'll give you two, and you can choose which one you want. Okay. If you could steal any song, make it your own song. The world only knows it as a Marlon song. What song would that be? Or if you could cover an album front to back, what album would you want to cover? Um, the, I'm going to take the first question. My friend Delaney. My friend Delaney always says that the song he wishes he'd written is "Happy Birthday." Oh yeah. Because like he'd be creaming it. It is. Like, it's a ton of money. Ah, oh, "Happy Birthday." 
Like, how many times do you hear that? A lot. Yeah, it's to the point where you that's, can't play it on TV because exactly. it costs so much money. Yeah, yeah. So, that I mean, that, that's a pretty strong, strong card to play. But for me, for me, I wish I'd written Yesterday by okay. the Beatles. I mean, that's that's the perfect song for me. And slightly more lyrically complex too. Slightly, not slightly. much. Not much. Not, not much. much. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, this will be my last question for you. Who are you listening to right now? Who uh, has your ear? Uh, ooh. Um. What have I been most recently been listening to? Uh, I'll take my time on this one. Let me think about it. Shit. I wanted to answer this well, because I'm sure there's, I've been listening to something that I want people to know about, but I can't think. Uh, uh, Party by Aldous Harding. Party by Aldous Harding? Yeah. It's, uh, it's, uh, she's a friend and a fellow Kiwi. And she's put it out, put this album out a month ago, and it's, it's, uh, I don't know, it's an extremely personal album, but it's just, it just kicks ass. It's, it's so weird, and so strong and confident, and in, in the strangest ways possible. So I highly, highly recommend checking out Party by Aldous Harding. Wonderful. Well, for the second time this festival, I feel profoundly underdressed, but I feel profoundly happy that you were able to make the time for us today. Marlon Williams, if you're not listening to his debut album, Marlon Williams, damn it, you should be. Stop what you're doing right now. Listen, Marlon, thank you so much. My pleasure.